It's always touchy out there in the AFC North. Who got better? Who didn't keep up with the rest of the division? We're going to talk about draft grades today on Locked On NFL Draft. Let's go. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I'm your host, former NFL and NFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy. He's Ryan Tracy at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter. I'm at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. But man, we're jumping back into it. I know I wasn't here yesterday with Rob Brain, but I'm here now today and we are discussing the AFC North. Uh draft grades, who we think stood out. And I think we we kind of have to start with the Baltimore Ravens. Who Do you think they had the best uh, draft in this class? Uh, them and the Jets are probably right up there. So uh, yeah. we'll just say, let's just call them top five and leave it at that. Definitely yeah. ahead of the rest of this division. For sure. And, I mean, they started with Kyle Hamilton. And I think at pick 14, that's a bit of a slide. Of a for a mm-hmm. prospect who was kind of projected to go I mean, early on. I mean, is he going to go number two overall to the Detroit Lions? Uh, is he going to go top five, maybe to the you know New York Giants, some of those teams? But ultimately, he ended up selling in that pick 14. I think maybe his uh, 40 yard dash has something to do with that. But even then, I mean, we're talking about the top half of the first round still for a guy who, you know, put on paper, not at the combine, that was pro day, 474, which, you know, that's not yeah. great. So, but you see a guy like him, six foot four, 220 pounds. I still think he's a fluid mover, a little long. We'll see how he transitions to the next level. But I mean, gosh, that was your first round pick. And then you pick at 25. And the reason why, if I'm not mistaken, they were able to pick at 25 is because they traded away a young, talented, speedy receiver. <laughs> and yeah. I did want to get into that. All right. They traded away Hollywood Brown. It, it, I think you want to say, well, dude, these teams just not want to play these young receivers. But we saw A.J. Brown get dealt. We saw Debo Samuel. He was a little disgruntled. Uh, mm-hmm. He wanted to get traded. Didn't happen. But you have Hollywood Brown. He does get traded. But not for reasons like the other guys. It wasn't about money. He just right. didn't want to play for Baltimore anymore and be in that offense, whether it was with the coordinator, Greg Roman, whether it was with the quarterback, Lamar Jackson, which I don't think is that, but, I mean, you never know. He was definitely upset right. about his usage. He requested a trade early in the process, and he gets moved. So with that pick, they selected Tyler Lindemann, center out of Iowa, which I think that, too, was a little confusing because it's like, well, we're used to Baltimore drafting these big body, big mover guys. And I think when you look at one of their later picks with Dan- Daniel Falele, and he's like the biggest offensive lineman in this class, right? Like that felt like, oh, that's a Baltimore Ravens pick. Lindebaum, not quite, but maybe they just want to change things up with a guy that can move extremely well at center position. They came up second round. Because it it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. That that's exactly what I'm thinking. Maybe they need to change things up a little bit because that didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Well, they changed it up, but then they followed up with Filele, who's the biggest right, right. Like yeah, like the 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 rest of this draft except for him is like guys that fit Ravens, right? Yeah. That just to spend 25 after going through all that to get it, it just felt a little bit weird to me. Yeah, and they what wasn't weird was them drafting David Ajabo, second round. First of all, y'all, they had a ton of picks. They had a ton of picks, so we're going to be reading these for, for a while. <laughs> all right, so, again, yeah, Kyle Hamilton, Tyler Lindebaum, David Ajabo, and I love that pick, getting him the 13th pick in, in the second round. That was awesome. And Edge Rusher, who I'm still high on. I know he had that injury. I know there's some areas that, hey, can he continue to you know progress as a pass rusher? Was he a one-hit wonder? All those type of things. But just off of an ability and being able to add him in the second round, I love it. And then they follow up with Travis Jones, which he was one of my favorite guys in this class. I mean, big, massive player out of UConn, six foot four, uh, 325 pounds, cat quick, ran a four nine at the combine. I mean, we're talking about somebody that has terrific agility. Matter of fact, you look at his three cone in his, in his uh, short shuttle, I think those numbers would be better than 
DK Metcalf. So when you start talking about the change of direction for a guy that's six foot four, uh, 200, 325 pounds, that's terrific. He has those long arms. So that's a player that I'm really excited about. And then they got Philele, offensive tackle out of Minnesota. And then maybe one of my favorite picks in this class, especially when you start talking about value, getting Jalen Lamar Davis, a cornerback out of Alabama. I mean, just a terrific prospect. He's clean in this. I mean, the, the riches kept getting uh, richer. Now, one of the surprising picks here was probably Jordan Stout, punter. And I know we were in studio. Yeah. Everybody started looking around like, punter? And that was a that started a run on punters. There were a bunch of punters that were taking right. in the fourth round. I love the pick of Isaiah Likely, uh, tight end you, out of Coastal Carolina. Charlie Culler. Charlie Culler went actually okay. before Charlie the punter, Okay, right? yeah, the tight end. Yeah, so they drafted two yeah. tight ends here. You got Culler. And then uh, Likely was a little bit later in the fourth round. But – I wonder if Isaiah Likely, would he not have been there if he would have ran better? Like, if he would have ran as fast as he shows on film, mm -hmm. is he there in the late fourth round? Shouldn't be, but I don't know. Everybody was there in the fourth round. They had like 17 picks in this round. <laughs> right. And then you have uh, Demarion Williams, cornerback out of Houston, and Tyler Batty, running back out of uh, uh, Missouri. But just overall, in general, when you, when you look at this class, I, I feel like they, they did a ton, and they had a lot of picks. So I was like, hey, man, you had this many picks, you want to use them, right? But, I mean, they used them just based off the players that they got. I mean, these are some of these guys are going to come in and be impact players. And I think maybe the sleeper out of all of them, Jalen Mar Davis, maybe Travis Jones. I mean, just having those two guys right there, I think they're terrific football players. So when you start talking about this class and all the things they did, that's awesome. Now, one thing they didn't do, and maybe they're telling us where they're headed. I know they have Mark Andrews as well tied in. Maybe they're just going to run a bunch of three and two right. tight end sets. Because right. they did not address the receiver position. And this is a team who, I mean, you they needed a receiver with Hollywood Brown. You right. take Hollywood Brown away, who was a thousand yard receiver. Now you got a lot of guys who are solid, but haven't really made their way like that. Like they haven't been that productive guy. So we'll see what they do at the receiver position. But I know Baltimore Ravens fans are probably not too happy about that. What are your thoughts just overall on this and this group? You know, it, as it comes out, except for the Linderbaum, everything makes sense. The punter you can live with because they literally had, what, seven picks in the fourth. So you can live with that. And clearly they felt that it needed to fill a need. So outside of that, they got all these guys that are, are Ravens guys. The league screwed up in letting all these guys get to them. That's what happened. <laughs> Knowing that they had all these picks in the fourth, Travis Jones should have gone earlier. Falele should have probably gone earlier. I had him in the third, and I, I think teams were probably a little gun shy. He is literally a, an Orlando Brown clone. He just isn't as polished yet. He will get there. I I, I love what they did with Charlie Kohler. I, he was one of my sleepers. He was one of my top five. Like, he's going to catch a lot of passes because everybody's looking the other way at Andrews. So I think this rounded them out. And with Jones being able to hit right now, like you said, and Kyle Hamilton being able to hit right now, like you said, and then you follow up and you're going to get a job back next season? Like that sets you up for the future too. So even though you spent the pick here, you're getting a delayed payoff on it. I, I really like the way that they set this up. I'd give them an A. Yeah, and, yeah, and I give them an A as well. And you talk about Jabo next year. Hell, I think Jabo. I think we'll see him at some point this year. Can he help when they're kind of pushing towards the playoffs and they want to make that late playoff run? And let's say they play the Cincinnati Bengals late in the year and they need that guy that can get after the quarterback. It might be David Jabo. I'm gonna be interested to see that. All right, but. Thank you. We're not just stopping here at Baltimore. We have, coming up next, the Pittsburgh Steelers and what they did in this draft. We thought that was our second favorite one, so we're going to get to them. But first, we want to talk to you a little bit about Blue Nile and how whether she performs a statement piece or an everyday subtle elegance. Our BlueNile.com has fine jury options for every mom. Shop high-quality classic diamond earrings, elegant tennis bracelets, and gemstones, pendants, and necklaces. And again, for every mom, not just your mom, but maybe your wife who you have children with. They got stuff for her as well. You know, looking for fine jewelry but having trouble choosing? Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7 available via phone or chat to help you find a memorable gift at every budget. So whether you have a budget like Ryan Tracy, who's a big-time baller, or you have the budget of Eric Crocker, who's not a baller at all, all right? They have someone there to help you, all right? Mark Mother's Day with something enduring. Classic diamond stud earrings, elegant tennis bracelet, birthstones, pendants, all those good things at BlueNow.com. You know, they're celebrating the special woman in your life. And not just one, 
probably your wife as well. All right, so bluenow.com, you can easily navigate thousands of fine jewelry options for every piece. And this Mother's Day, give something that she'll treasure, all right, forever with this fine jewelry from bluenow.com. All right, and they got something special just for you locked on listeners. You get $50 off of $500 worth of stuff. All right, so this podcast is exclusive and only good through Mother's Day. So use the code locked on for that. All right, again, promo code locked on. And make sure that every order is ensured to ship free and it arrives in a discreet packaging. So they, they won't even know. So if you have a nosy wife like I do, she'll look at that and have your name on it. She won't even think to go through it and see what it is. All right. So you guys, what are you going to do? You want to make sure that you go to bluenow.com and, you know, not perfect. No problem. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Shop stress uh, free with guaranteed free shopping and returns. Need your special purchase fast? You know, in most cases, Blue Now, now they can deliver overnight. Every order is insured and arrives in discreet packaging again. All right. So, bluenow.com, go do that right now. And we also want to let you know a little bit about betonline.net and how it is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports information. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, news, including this year's basketball playoffs that are going on right now. I think the, I think the uh, Golden State Warriors are playing right now. All right, so by the time you hear this, they would have already played. But did you put money on it? All right, over and unders, player props, all those good things. Make sure you do that. Major League Baseball is kicked off, and they got the props on that. The Kentucky Kentucky Derby is back. They got the props on that. All right, Bell Line is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and much more. Head over right now to the website to use your and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action going on at Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, man. The Pittsburgh Steelers, the other team now I feel like, you know, they continue to draft well and they do a good job of getting weapons, and they did all of the above here, starting with the quarterback, Kenny Pickett. And I think that was a little bit surprising because a lot of people thought, oh, it's going to be Malik Willis, who did not go into, like, third round. Definitely wasn't Willis. I think they did they throw, did they try to, like, Throw everybody off their scent a little bit because early on, they're like, oh, yeah, we really like Malik Willis. But, you know, Malik Willis, he's not going to be there. He won't be there at pick 20. Well, they went with Kenny Pickett. They got the guy. They didn't have to move up or anything like that. That was awesome. They followed up with uh, George Pickens. Terrific pick. You know, you got a guy with a really high upside. Then third round, they went with DeMarvin Leal. Fourth round, one of my favorite receivers in this class, Calvin Austin the third. Then they went with Connor Haywood so that he can play with his brother and Pittsburgh Steelers, they're notorious for doing that. All right. Hayward is a tight end, but I think he can play tight end, fullback. All right. They got four brothers, right? right? You got right. uh the, the the safety, you got the Watts. What's it? The safety. Uh, Ed, Edmonds, Watts. Ed, Edmonds. Hayward. You got the Watts brothers. Uh the you, they used to have the pouncy you know, they, right, they have right. a lot. Right? So they do I love it. They do they do a good job of that. Uh and then they followed up seventh mm-hmm. round. They got Mark Robinson and Chris Alodicon. Al- Al- out of mm-hmm. South Dakota State, South Dakota State, North Dakota State, South Dakota. The Dakotas represented very well in this uh, draft class. But, again, you got to start with Kenny Pickett. And you just lost a guy with Ben Roethlisberger, who had been, I mean, a stable in your organization for so many years. And now you, you got a guy like Mitchell Trubisky. Clearly, he's not the long-term answer there. But maybe Kenny Pickett, a guy that played at Pittsburgh, gets to stay home in that same state and play for a Pittsburgh Steelers, man, man, I mean, gets to play in that same building, the same locker right. room, gets to use the same training facility. So, you know, starting off, what do you think about that fit? It's not even the fit. I, I think the fit's good. I mean, are they going to be used to the long ball the way they've had with Ben? No, but Ben has been Ben for two or three seasons, right? Right. I think, honestly, if it was just for the job that Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin did in getting in position to draft Kenny Pickett, if, if that's all I was graded on, I'd give them an A straight ahead. They did they did the best job, I think, that we've seen in a long time of keeping what they wanted to do to themselves. Um, and, right. and clearly it worked out. Now, that may be a function of the fact that nobody wanted any of these quarterbacks. Certainly nobody wanted any of the rest of them. So maybe there was four or five teams that were interested in Pickett, and they just maneuvered themselves to be able to do it. So kudos to them. The Pickens pick, I think, is really interesting. I think it's a good spot for him. I think he can flourish there. 
they have a tendency to deal with a lot. What I've heard since the draft is that for several teams, they ended up taking George off the board because of his attitude when they met with him. Mm. Uh, a little bit of, of, of kind of entitlement is the word that I kept hearing. So I think in that locker room, Knowing that they've been through the A-B thing forever and we, they've been down that road, I think that there's enough room and enough power on the staff to control that and keep it in line and get the most out of George Pickens. So I don't know that he could have landed anywhere better. So good for him. Leal, I think, is, is a good value there. He fell quite a bit from where we had him preseason. Love the Calvin Austin pick. I think he's going to get in the right there. And I'm all for any team that drafts a fullback. I am here for the fullback. So well done. I, I'll give him a B. All right. And I'll give them – Again, I like it. I'm going to go B minus. I'm going to go B minus. But I really like what they did at receivers. And obviously, Pittsburgh Steelers, they have been terrific with finding these receivers that are explosive, that win. And maybe it's just the fact that they take a lot of swings. And I like how they did in this class. One of these guys are going to pan out. I'm pretty sure they're looking at it to go with what they already have. They got, you know, big Chase Claypool. They have Deontay Johnson, right? And I know eventually because he's in that same class of the DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, Debo Samuel, Terry McLaurin, he's in that draft class. Those guys, this is the this is the last year of their contracts because none of those guys that we just mentioned were first round picks. So you go out, you get two more guys. Where it's like, all right, Calvin Austin, maybe you can be our Deontay Johnson down the line. Okay, five foot eight, 175 pounds, whatever. You are quick, you are dynamic, you get open, you are explosive. And we'll see how he comes along, and maybe he'll you know make it to where they don't want to have to pay guy like Deontay Johnson, man, who dropped a lot of passes early on, got a lot better last season, but then, oh, the injury bug starts to bite him a little bit. All right, so we'll see what happens there. But I think just those picks alone, George Pickens, Calvin Austin, and getting a, a quarterback who he feels a long-term guy, I like what they did there. And uh, so, yeah, I give them a B-. minus. I really like their draft. And we'll see how much we like the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals drafts when we come back. But first, we want to talk to you a little about, you know, one of our partners. And that partner is Bill Bar. All right. This summer is coming right now. And again, I love this snack. You guys have heard me talk about this all the time. And for anyone who loves to snack as much as I do, you better be snacking smart. And you better be snacking healthy. And Bill Bar is the thing that's going to help you do just that. Most Bill Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to any candy bar or any of the little snacks that you have around your house, especially candy bars, 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. That stuff's not good for you. And Bill Bar, they got all the good stuff. And not just good stuff because of it's healthy for you. They got good flavors, all right? They got banana cream pie. They got all kind of puffs. I love the puffs. Those are my favorite. <laughs> all right, but they got the puffs. They got the new churro flavor, which I ate a bunch of those when we were out there in Dallas. All right, and so many other flavors, uh, double chocolate, raspberry, banana cream pie, so many more. They are all delicious, and they are all new flavors who are coming out all the time. All right, if you think of a flavor that you might like, they might be able to make it. If they do, I guarantee it to be really good. So what are you going to do right now to get these amazing protein bars? You're going to go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and get 15% off of your order. Again, use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Huh. All right, Ryan. Got the Cleveland Browns up next. And this is going to be a good one because this is a team that a lot of people are like, okay, what did they do? And eh, started off, one, they yeah. didn't have any high picks <laughs> because, you know, they traded for a guy named I mean, Deshaun Watson, and we'll see who, when he's able to get on the field. But Martin uh, Emerson, big, long cornerback, ran well for his size. Alex Wright. Mm -hmm. uh, defensive end out of UAB. That was a guy we watched film on, like him. David Bell he was very consistent, a high, highly productive receiver, uh, his, especially his rookie year, but didn't test as well, so that kind of knocked him down a little bit. Uh, Perion Winfrey, which I think a lot of people were kind of shocked to see him go in the fourth round. Yeah, K. York, kicker, and again, he had that run of punters and kickers in the fourth round. Jerome Ford, I think that was one of their better picks, especially with where they got him. Fifth round. I was a little upset with the 49ers for taking a running back third round, especially when you have guys like Jerome Ford, you're able to get in the fifth. Mike Woods out of Oklahoma, who was a transfer from University of Arkansas. And Isaiah Thomas, seventh round. Dawson Deaton, seventh round. All right, so let's just start with some of the picks that I did like. Again, I, I, like, I like Bill because I think for a team like 
the uh, the Cleveland Browns. Maybe he's not as dynamic as you ideally would like, but he's a productive player. And okay, he's not as explosive. Well, they just had a guy by the name of I don't know Jarvis Landry, who we've seen him put up terrific numbers while not being the most explosive guy. He ran four seven seven as opposed to yeah. what um, Bill ran, which was four six five. So, you know, enough speed. Now, strong hands, good enough route running. Now, how would I utilize him, all right? Uh, Perion Winfrey, that was another one of my favorite picks. And then again, like I said, Jerome Ford, I think for the value, being able to get him in the fifth round, that was awesome as well. But overall, uh, not a terrible draft class, but I give it a C-. minus. Yeah, I, I want to like some of those picks in the third. Since they had three of them, what, spaced 20 picks apart? I just... Yeah. None of them really write home to me in, in in trying to function with with Deshaun first and foremost, but trying to shore up the defense on the backside as well. I do like Winfrey. Um, I, this is actually about where I had him. I had him right at the bottom of the third, so maybe 10 picks ahead of where they actually took him. For me, the best value they got, I agree. It's Jerome Ford. Really like his fit. I think he's going to be great, but this is a pick about the future. When you have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt on your roster already and you select – and draft a running back in the fifth makes me wonder it's Kareem Hunt's last year in this contract. So yeah. I think this telegraphs at 27, going to be 28 years old by the time his tr- contract's up. This is the end for him. Now they have Dearness Johnson too. And I think that's a really nice backfield between the four of them. Do they carry four? That's going to be the question. They may have to just to keep four because I think he's going to be worth it. And last but not least, and did you give your grade? I gave. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it a flat C. Okay, flat C. Not bad, not bad. Good, good cop, bad cop there. And last but not least, we have the uh, defending AFC champions yeah. that knocked off the Kansas City Chiefs. All right, what a game. Kansas City, weren't they up like 21 to 3? Wow. You got you to gotta do right. it every time, don't you? <laughs> my, well, my 49ers lost in the same fashion that day, so uh, I can't talk too much. But they started off with a bang. Love what they did with Daxon Hill. He's one of my favorite uh, players in this class, the versatility that he has at the safety position, being rangy, being able to play as a pure coverage guy. I think he has the size, he has the speed, the ability, the fluidness to where he can't, he doesn't only have to be a nickel. He can play outside of me, be, and he can probably be a single high, two high type safety as well. But for sure, they want to play him in that nickel and ask him to do a little bit more from a man standpoint. I think he's terrific there, maybe a star position. They fall that up, and they only had six picks. That's probably some of the fewest in this draft class. But mm-hmm. uh, round two, they went and got Cam Taylor Britt out of Nebraska, cornerback, okay? And they need a cornerback help. So we'll see how they utilize these two guys there. Uh, Zachary Carter, defensive end out of Florida. Cordell Volson, uh, guard out of North Dakota State, another Dakota guy. <laughs> uh, man, they are representing out the FCS. Uh, Tyson Anderson, safety from Toledo. And Jeffrey Gunner, edge from Coastal Carolina. But again, you know, might not have the highest grade on this class. And that could just be, uh, you don't see like the, the sexy guys that were like super productive in the big lights. But when you sure. look at the first two guys, got, especially Dax and Hill, I think he's going to come in and be an immediate player to really help and impact what they have going on. And then Cam Taylor, Taylor Britt, we'll see how good of a depth guy he, he can be. But second round, pick 28, it's pretty high. I like it though. A guy that can play off, he can press, he can do some of those things. It was coached up extremely well. At Nebraska, one thing we didn't really see them address a whole lot. A lot of people were mocking a guard, tackle, offensive line to them. They did get a guard, but they waited until late in the fourth round to do so. So definitely went away from what a lot of people were thinking, where they were going prior to prioritize offensive line. Still got their old linemen. I give them a solid C. What about you? I I am concerned about Joe Burrow and his health. It's been <laughs> like what th- two off seasons now. We've been we've been screaming to protect him better and. I had Folsom as, a, as a, a late, late pick, like in the bottom of day three. Up there at wow. four, that makes me wonder. Uh, now, maybe I missed something. Hard to get North Dakota State tape, so maybe I missed something. I can freely admit that, but I am concerned about that value in particular. I like the value they got with Tyson Anderson, uh, Gunter, but I think that obviously Dex Hill is, is a slam dunk, but I think the guy that makes the biggest impact here could be Zach Carter. And just in terms of getting in that rotation, bringing his 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 nastiness, his edge, I, I like that fit for him. I think he could be good in that defense. I'm going to be looking forward to him. I'll I'll be with you though. I think I'll grade him out here as a C as well because there's some questions for me. Right. So 
awesome, all these teams. And again, we give draft grades. They don't mean much. This is how we kind of initially view this draft class, but we'll really know more from the Bengals and from the Cleveland Browns. And really, I mean, the other teams as well, or the Ravens, who we feel like got the most talent coming in. And Pittsburgh Steelers seems like they were able to build for the future. But three years from now, we'll really know where these where these guys from this class stand. But we're getting to the NFC North next for y'all. So tune in Monday. It's not Mock Draft Monday anymore. We're continuing no, with this weird. process, and then we'll start to get into some future prospects and what we're seeing on film from those guys that prepare you for the following season. But go ahead. You're absolutely right. Check out yeah. NFL33.com, folks, because my top 16 for next year's draft is already out. Okay, he already got it. That's my guy, Ryan Tracy, at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter, also at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. You can follow me. But again, one, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. That's going to do it. We'll see y'all Monday. Peace. Peace.